It is absolutely beautiful outside today. The sun is shining and a polar vortex rolled in and it's like minus 35 right now and we're freezing cold. But that's okay. I hope. I just had to change a bottle of propane. We're going through it a little bit quick right now. So yeah, we got a couple hundred pounders ready at hand for whenever we need to. So right now is one of those times when we need to. This is our fun little uh, propane shed we made. It's nothing fancy right now, but we need something to actually house our tanks in because during the winter, the temperatures dropping as much as they do, it really causes a lot of issues with running propane. So last year we didn't have the shed um, and the propane, as soon as it went to minus 30, it didn't really work too well. It was kind of hit and miss. Like sometimes it'd be uh, the furnace would fire up, sometimes it wouldn't. So we had to have backup electrical heat. This year, with this little shed protecting the bottles, we've had none of that. So far, it fires up, no problem. And it's not even heated. It's just an insulated shed with the propane tanks inside. Right now, it doesn't look anything very pretty. Just a roof with insulation. But we will cover this in the spring, make it look a little bit prettier. I didn't end up having enough time to make it a fancy looking shed. Just a regular shed for now that is insulated quite well. We'll worry about looks later. For now, we need practicality. And uh, it's doing exactly what we need, keeping us warm and keeping the propane going. We actually, during this time of year, when the temperatures drop past minus 30, we go through about 100 pounds of propane uh, in a week, which is quite a bit. But to counteract that in the summer, we go through basically none, like two 100 pound propane tanks will last us the entire spring and summer, no problem. So it, it balances out though expensive in this in the winter it's super cheap in the summer but warmth and insulation is really important with tiny homes especially when you're living up in the north like this like we're we're northern british columbia in canada temperatures as you can clearly see drop to freezing so you need to make sure your tiny home is is well taken care of as far as heat's going and that propane is serving us well we can even be off grid with with propane as long as we have a little bit of electricity to fire up our furnace we're good to go which we can easily do with a generator that we have on hand as backup at all times now i want to talk about one more thing though check this out don't mind the puff of steam coming out behind me we just have our dryer running right now so yeah we have a full washer dryer in our tiny home uh, but this is what i want to talk about again it's our chickens are yapping over there. Again, it's kind of ugly looking. It's not pretty by any means, but this is six inch insulation walls that we have for skirting around our tiny home. <sighs> Without this, cold will get under, under there, make the tiny home way colder, we'll go through more propane, and it'll potentially even freeze our water lines. We don't want water frozen. Our water source is under there. We have a water tank that is stored underneath there. Uh, our water pump, all of that is under there, and then feeds up into the home. So we need these to keep our, our home warm and sufficient and actually running during the winter. Without these, we would be hooped. absolutely hooped. So when we put the tiny home in two years ago, we put these walls in and they've worked since. I think this spring we're actually gonna make them look a little nicer, throw some, some, the chickens are having fun over there in this cold, throw some siding on it or something, make it a little, look a little bit better. But in the meantime, it's doing its job and that's what matters. Hi Ripley, come here. Hi sweetheart, hi. Yeah, go get him. How are the chickens doing? A fold. My little love. She's surviving? My little love. I think so. They're either doing one of two things. They're either huddling up together. In the sun. In the sun. Or standing on one leg because their feet are cold. Or staying in the coop. Yeah or staying in the coop. Yeah, there's three in the coop right now. Yeah, so the chickens are hardy birds. They can they can survive this no problem. I mean, for hundreds and thousands of years, people have had chickens up in the north and all around the world in cold temperatures. So they're, they're doing fine. They're not liking it, but they're doing fine. We do actually have two small 100 watt little light bulbs we can turn on in there to keep them warm in the extreme cold. Uh, we've been doing that at night, making sure that 
making sure that they can stay warm when necessary. Nicole hates the fact that they're out here in the cold. Oh yeah, I would have every single one of them inside right now. <laughs> you can't do that, unfortunately. Especially not in a tiny home. I think Leia's liking this. She's like, you can hold me all day. Oh yeah, she's loving the body warmth, I'm sure. <laughs> Rip. What? You need to throw the ball? Here, go get it. There's Good girl. Eggs. What? There's actually eggs. Really? There's two. Sweet. Okay, so these these are Just fake fake, fake yeah. eggs. They uh the fake eggs show the chickens where to lay eggs and actually like promotes them to use the nesting boxes. So each nesting box has a fake egg, but also apparently this one had two actual eggs in it still. Yeah, so clearly they're they're not doing too bad. That's four eggs today from eight chickens. <laughs> yeah, I'm shocked. I thought we maybe would have gotten one. Clearly they're still happy chickens in past minus thirty weather. Are you cold? Are you cold? And all Honey wants to do is go inside. <laughs> Are you cold? Even cold temperatures like this clearly bother Huskies too, so. Except that one, who just wants to play soccer and fetch all day, no matter the conditions, every day. Ripley, we're gonna go inside and warm up. Come on. Come on, Rip. She's a little reluctant, but she's, she's coming in. My beard's melting. What? I said my beard is melting. Okay, back over to our main camera. Oh, they're loving life. But we need to love life too. I'm gonna make myself a coffee. Do you want anything hot to drink? Hot chocolate, obviously. Okay, okay. Gotta put the eggs away. Look at this. Even though the temperature right now. Whoa, look at all these eggs. Our chickens are still producing really good. I thought for sure in this low temperature they'd shut off and be done, but we have a dozen and a half eggs right now. We're eating eggs like every day too. Mm -hmm. So this we, is awesome. We've still been getting what? How many? Like two eggs a day at least. Usually at least, and then on a good day we get four. Which today, even though it's minus thirty-five, <laughs> we still yeah. got four eggs. I would have been totally fine if they didn't give us any eggs today. Same. I I would have let them take a day off, no problem. <laughs> I had something else I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit more. I want to elaborate on some of the stuff I was talking about when I was outside with the water and the freezing pipes and everything like that. I don't know why I did quotations, but anyways, the freezing pipes is of course a big issue when it comes to any sort of tiny home, mobile homes or anything like that. It's a normal thing. Pipes freeze. Uh, we had a major issue in our tiny home the first year we were in this tiny home because we told our builder, hey, you know what? Tiny home's gonna be way up north and everything. We need the pipes to be well insulated and not freeze. And they said, yeah, no problem. We got that. Spoiler alert, they didn't have that. That was a problem. So up north, you have to be very careful with putting pipes in exterior walls of your home. That means if your wall, like this one right here, is on the outside of your home, you can't put a pipe in it. This wall, being that it's on the inside, you can. Our pipes ran along the entire exterior of our home. We thought they were gonna be in the floor or something. So when we got it, pipes froze as soon as winter hit and we talked to our builder, they're like, oh, our bad. And we're like, yes, you're bad. So they sent people over and they had to rerun the plumbing into the inside of the home to prevent freezing. So we have these PEX pipes running through our entire home now along the walls. Sounds like a pain in the ass. It's actually not really. You can't see them unless you really look for them. That spot in the office is the only spot you see them. Anything else is hidden relatively well. Behind the fridge, goes underneath the counter, over to the pump, you can't even see it. Now the builder that did this since then has actually changed the way that they do tiny homes for anything up north. We taught them a very valuable lesson. Put the pipes inside. They now actually hide those pipes underneath the baseboard. So our pipes will never freeze so long as we have heating inside. And our builder learned, like I said, a very valuable lesson. How's the warm drink hitting? Real good. Yeah? Yeah, I needed this. <laughs> On a scale of one to 10, how much do you need a hot drink? Uh, 11. Wow, <laughs> an 11 out of 10, that's mm -hmm. significant. Well, it's dang cold out there. It is, but we've had tiny home issues 
in the past with heating, like the, the pipes freezing the very first winter we had this home, as I mentioned. The but propane getting too cold. The propane getting too cold was our last year's issue. Mm -hmm. And so far we haven't had it this year. The shed has taken care of that problem. Mm -hmm. So far, no problems yet. So now we've just added chickens to have to worry about them because <laughs> yeah. we can't just go a winter without having any worries. Well, of course, no. <laughs> and we have more chickens on the way too, so. We which do. In the spring, we'll be doing some chicken videos about raising newborn chickens in a tiny home because apparently that's happening now. It is happening. Anyways, I'm pretty sure we're gonna be the first people to ever raise chickens inside their tiny home. I don't know. Maybe someone out there has done it somewhere, it, but. I'm excited. It's gonna. I have a feeling we're not gonna get any sleep with our podcast, because we have a podcast that we record right here on this counter, which we're actually gonna be uploading some episodes here on YouTube too. So if you're interested, they're coming. In true crime podcast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we're gonna be recording here with little chicks just up in this loft right here, probably peeping away. That's gonna be fun. It's gonna be interesting. Which, would be, which do you think will be more difficult? Going through a week of a polar vortex in a tiny home or going through raising baby chicks inside the tiny home? Which do you think would frustrate you more? Uh, the polar vo vortex, yeah. for sure. Because I hate being cold. We'll test your metal and see if that's really what the case is gonna be in the spring when the, the tiny chicks are here. And the other big thing too that has made winter better for me is a heated blanket. Oh. Heated blankets are pretty awesome. So, yeah, I'm yeah. all about my heated blanket. Anyways, polar vortex in a tiny home has been challenging, been interesting. Chilly. Been chilly, but it's also been very doable. We're having no issues now. Mm -hmm. It's just a cozy, tiny home with a very cold outside. It is really cozy in here. It's like small and warm and you got your hot drink. It's nice. Oh, one of the best feelings in the world. Anyways, we're gonna go enjoy the rest of our drinks and probably make some lunch because Chickens gave us eggs, and that sounds like it's a great idea for lunch. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. 